The Springers go for a three-peat on the gridiron as Highland Springs tries to survive and advance to the state championship. Welcome to Sportswire, I'm Will Catterley. It's hard to believe that going into Saturday night, the Highland Springs Springers were only one game away from reaching the state finals for a school record three consecutive seasons. But to get there, the Springers would have to dig deep on a defensive end against an opportunistic Nance Mon River. So on a Saturday night, we go to Highland Springs. Springers have had trouble early in ball games. Last week against Hermans, they fell behind 14-0. Offense looked like they weren't going to have a problem here as uh, pass is complete. Waller to Robert Jones, the third, but the next play is picked off. And number 54 for Nansman River, Valdarius Payne. Highland Springs, could they feel the pain? Well, the interception would set up Nansman River deep in Highland Springs territory. The Warriors get stacked up in the line of scrimmage. Defense, early here in the first quarter, their task, keep them out of the end zone. And that's just what the Springers would do. The stop right there, and it would lead to this. Warriors have to settle for a field goal inside the Springer five that would come back to haunt them. They would have a three to nothing lead though early in the first quarter. Later, still first quarter. Well, Springer's offense is going to get going now, right? Yeah, look at the run up the middle by Raekwon Smith. Two-headed monster running back in this one. We'll talk about the big guy a little bit later in the highlights. Freshman Phenom for Highland Springs. Same drive would lead to this. Nice pass. Robert Jones a third again. And then the pitch and oh no! And oh look what I got! They drop the pitch, does the running back. And it's gonna be returned all the way to Painter for a touchdown in this dream season. Daytron Branch on the return. This dream season looks like it's going up in flames in a hurry. It's 10 to nothing as we end the first quarter. Second quarter though, Waller says, ah, forget about that, we're all right. Fires, finds, JV on Smalls. Down inside the one yard line, Springers would capitalize. Waller, after the pass, gonna use his legs and that big offensive line to get into the end zone for the touchdown. Highland Springs on the board. I see you, Waller, 10-7, the score at this point. And then the defense, well, they got going. River, the Warriors, uh, they're a running football team. Highland Springs knew it and they were ready for it. They get the stop there and then they try the trap play up the middle, not happening. Big number 55 and number 15 in on the tackle there, Kendrick Jones. So 10 to seven, we go to the second half as the lights go on at Victor Kreider Stadium and the defense was on all night long. Number 15 again, Kendrick Jones in the backfield. And then again, Jones, stellar game defensively for Highland Springs. Human highlight reel himself. If Highland Springs could just score, right? You knew that they couldn't be kept down all game. Well, they were down, like I said last week, 14-0 to Hermitage before their offense got rolling. This time down 10 to nothing. And they come back big at 10-7. Raekwon Smith on the catch there. Still third quarter. Roll out. Waller fires, finds, connects to Billy Kemp. Touchdown, Highland Springs. And the Springers get back on top, much to the light of their home fans. And it's 14-10, Highland Springs defense causing turnovers now. Scoop it, pick it up, and that would end the Nansman River drive. That was actually in Springer territory. And then later, Highland Springs does nothing on offense on their ensuing drive, but the defense gonna do it again. Number 21, Shakaz Cosby strips a football. Who got it? Who's got it? Springers say, we got it. And guess what? The refs would agree. Highland Springs on back-to-back -back drives. The defense stands tall again. Back-to-back -back turnovers, and then look at the big guy. This guy's six feet, 245 pounds, and he's a freshman. Drayshawn Taylor, don't get in his way. I didn't want to. Touchdown, Springers, and it's 21-10. It's all she wrote in the fourth quarter, right? Well, there's a reason why Nansman River made it into the playoffs and it's because their running game is pretty good and it finally had one really good drive. They only had 42 yards of total offense in the first half. Second half on this drive, they had more than that. Number 43 is gonna find Pater. It's not over yet. Touchdown, Warriors, and it's 21-18, still 5.06 to go. But the Springers, 
going to put the exclamation point and end this one. This will help. Billy Kemp in the flat makes a man miss, as he does quite often. Also draws a personal foul penalty to add on to it, tack on to it, and then give it to the big guy. Second touchdown of the night for the freshman running back. All Springers in this one. They will advance to the finals. And yeah, you might as well flex those muscles because Highland Springs is moving to the state title game. 28-18 is your final. Coach Johnson excited about the play of his defense. Our defense is our defense. They've kept us in the game all year long. Uh, they've been the guys to, to help us win ball games when it's been tight, or the offense kind of been sluggish or slow. So just Coach Simmons and those guys do an excellent job. I'm glad they work on our staff, and I'm glad they work at our school, and I'm glad I have the pleasure of working with them. So he's the best defense coordinator in the state of me, and he's done a great job week after week. Highland Springs moves on to play for the ultimate prize at Hampton University against Tuscarora. Well, for nearly two decades, Friday night football at Hermitage has been consistently terrific. Coach Patrick Kane was on the winning side 169 times for the Panthers and now has decided to end his reign. His record will be one that stands the test of time as the winningest coach in Hermitage history. The year 2001, a new head coach at Hermitage. Coming off a two and eight season one year ago, Patrick Kane had his first shot with the Hermitage Panthers in a motto with just three little words. You just, I was hopefully following our new motto, play the play. And our uh, motto, play the play. You focus on that play, you go hard on that play, you finish that play hard, you don't worry about what happens, and you know, then you can line back up and you play the next play. So you gotta play the play, follow our motto, get after it each play, and at the end of the game, we'll be proud of our performance. <laughs> Every coach has a system, you know, all systems work. Nobody's better than the other. The key is getting your players to buy into it. He brought a system to Hermitage. He believed in it and kids bought into it. He stuck by it and they played hard. And, you know, one play at a time, just play hard. The biggest thing I was concerned in 2001 was when things don't go perfect, how are we going to respond? Uh, when you've been two and eight for eight years or an average of two and eight for eight years, you're used to things going bad at some point. So when you get that difficult spot, how are you going to handle it? And I think that that model kind of helped us get through it. Okay, they made a play. It's okay. Next play, we'll make a play. You know, hard work trumps anything or just about everything in life. The harder you work, the better off you are and the luckier you get. This is the second quarter. Lee Davis with a punt. Can't get it off. And the Hermit. Patrick Kane's hard work would pay off in his very first game as head coach, upsetting a ranked Lee Davis squad. But his motto, play the play, would be tested just two weeks later in a game against God. We were down by 16 with two minutes to go, and we tie it up, and they score in overtime, and we score in overtime, and then uh, had a penalty on the extra point, which caused us to kick a longer field goal, and we missed it. So that, uh, that was probably our first heartbreaker, the loss to God. We fought a hard battle. They play a lot of character, play with a lot of heart. Uh, unfortunately, we came on the bad side of it. We'll test our manhood. Can you come back when it's, when it's tough? It's easy, to be, it's easy to be top dog when you're 2-0. and Now we're 2-1, and one. we'll find out what kind of real character we have. His um, commitment to making everything the best that it can be, and he didn't accept substandards. He, he expected everybody to do their best and put forth their best effort all the time. That's exactly what Coach Kane got from his team in 2001. They were 2-8 and eight one year ago. They only lost one more game in the 2001 season, finishing 7-2. and two. Yeah, man, I give all the credit to the defense, you know what I'm saying? They kept the offense on the on the field, gave me the opportunity in the offensive line, got to give it up to them, couldn't get nowhere without them. Then my tailback, blocking so much, man. I really appreciate it. 2001 was just the beginning, as the Hermitage Panthers just kept winning and winning. With all that winning came other accolades. Next year, I will be seeing the Ohio State University. From players like Curtis Grant and Derek Green, in schools like Ohio State and Michigan, Kane helped any player who wanted to take it to the next level. I think one of the things that is uh, I'm most proud of is that so many kids who came through our program 
had enough of a positive experience that they wanted to continue at the next level. Past five years, we have, we'll, after these guys move on, we'll have 19 players playing Division One football. That's just Division One. And as the Panthers kept winning, that number would rise and rise and rise. One, one day at a time, night after night, and I just prayed about it and just left it alone and just had a great senior season with all my boys here. I have an opportunity to play college football on Saturday afternoons. It's probably the most rewarding thing that I can ask for as a coach. Um, you know, education is about teaching, growing, and, and have an opportunity to continue the education on the next level. 175 wins, and 17 years later, Coach Kane has helped countless student athletes at Hermitage. The winningest football coach in Hermitage history leaves with this advice. Play the play, one play at a time, one day at a time. You work hard and uh, good things can happen. What happens when you've played the final play? There is no play to play. Oh, hopefully that, 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 that's a little more than a football thing. Hopefully that's a life thing that, that you take with you. Um, Another thing I like to throw out there, life is 10%. What happens to you 90% and how you react to it kind of goes with that uh, mentality. Uh, you know, bad things happen. It's how you deal with it and how you react to it is, is how it will end in the, in the final outcome. Look where they are. They won the premier programs in the state, and he didn't do it because he's a good coach. He did it because he's a heck of a man with more strong morals and values and character. He's a, he's a great person, and I want to wish him the best of luck in whatever future endeavors he has. When you have something that's at the bottom and you want it to be at the top, you got to work for it. Nobody's going to give you anything, and I think that's one example that I can learn from Coach Kane, and I think anybody can take that lesson and apply it to any aspect of their life, and they can see the fruit of their labor. Patrick Kane will keep his options open for now, but it will truly be pretty tough to replace at Hermitage. Well, we hit the hardwood when we come back. Two young and talented teams meet up as Henrico plays host to Hermitage. Highlights are straight ahead. Don't always have time to watch Sportswire on your TV? No problem. Episodes are available anytime on the web at WatchSportswire.com. And it works just as well on your phone. Watch Sportswire anytime, anywhere at WatchSportsWire.com. Welcome back to SportsWire. As the calendar closes in on the new year, basketball takes center stage and two of the more talented teams had an early season test. Henrico and Hermitage, two playoff teams one year ago, went to battle it out for a Friday night win. And it would be a good one too. Hermitage, Marvin Reed and Henrico's Timon Jones. Come on, Jones and company. And there's Tim Jones, older brother and former state champion for the Henrico Warriors, trying to beg for an intentional foul. It was later in the game. I figured I'd show him at the beginning. Here's Tamon Jones right to the rack. How about that? Steal score. Henrico had the early lead. Hermitage, very talented, however. They were strong last year as well. And from outside, there's the aforementioned Marvin Reed. He Splashes that for three. Jones says, I can do that. So look at my bro. Hey, bro, how do you like my three ball? Knocks that one in from downtown. Henrico back up. Still first quarter highlights, by the way. Great ball movement here. Check it out. Number one, Torres settles. He doesn't settle for much, but we'll get two down low. And back and forth. See so do -si do Here we go. Right to the rack. Henrico with the answer. Daquan Stevens, 17-16. It's a one-point affair after one quarter of play. Second quarter. That's way too long to sit back behind that screen, but it is effective. The three ball, count it. Number 15 doing the honors, Reggie Giles. Hermitage got hot in this quarter. Here's the pass. More good ball movement. Top of the key, not the nylon. It's rain and threes, hallelujah, for Devon Towns. And then more great ball movement on offense. From beyond the arc, Hermitage was absolutely blasting the rock. Marvin Reed again. And Henrico's defense had some answers. Jones finds his man, Isaiah Reese. He connects down low for two. Still second quarter, though. 
The long three ball again. Yeah, count it. He got it to go. Kareel Keel, and it's a two-point game. Hermitage in front until this. That's called the old and one, old-fashioned three-point play. Do you know, Hermitage didn't even take a foul shot in the first half. And Ryko dominant at the line, but they missed a lot of free throws. Hermitage getting a three-point play of their own. Torres settles with the answer. This is still a one-possession game until the steal, the score. It is good. And Daquan Stevenson with the answer. 52-48. Anybody's game as we go to the fourth. And Ryko took over. From way downtown in the corner, money ball. Yeah, Stevenson. And Jones, this team can score, can Henrico. When's the last time you've seen a team from Henrico that couldn't score? Jones gonna put this one away and call it an evening as Coach Vance Harmon and Henrico get a big win at home over Hermitage. 72 61 is your final. To ladies hoops, Deep Rum Wildcats, uh, they look pretty good early on in the season, taking on Clover Hill. This was no contest. At the free throw line, first quarter highlights, they would own the glass. One rebound, two rebounds. Here comes a third, no, finally up and in. Number 32 finds the bottom of the basket, Taylor Parker. And then defense, rude the day, all the way. And no, but again, offensive rebounds, that's uh, kind of the theme here. Number 21 and one, Anna Smith finds a scorebook. And just about every Wildcat would in this one. This was a blowout. Number 22, Caroline Bullyard. She scores down low. They also could shoot from outside as well. Number 23, Splish Splash, Veronica Dance. That's good from deep. And then uh, good ball handling. This could be a good team. I know that Clover Hill isn't really having uh, the greatest of all teams put on the court there for this particular season. but. Deep run, they can play like this, share the basketball. They're gonna be a tough out later on. Aza Abdul Rahman, uh, 20 to two after one quarter of play. Wildcats, yeah, 20 to two. Do you know there's a running clock this year in high school basketball? If you're up by 30 more points at the half, it's a running clock throughout the second half. Deep run looking just for that. Veronica Dance for two, then outside. That was shot so quickly, I almost missed it. Number 24, Hannah Green. Green means go, Wildcats were a go. Offensively in this one, and then all the way to the rack. You cannot contain Hannah Green and company. How about more Wildcats? Sharing the basketball, double team, double team. Oh, I'm open then, yep. Splash, splash, count it. 48-11 is your fight. And winter sports season doesn't mean just basketball. The first meet of the gymnastics season is upon us at Stonewall Jackson Middle School. Deep run, Godwin, Lee Davis, Patrick Henry all involved. And on the floor, one of the best in the county, Kindred Jones. And Kindred would finish tied for third place with Brianna Capelli of Lee Davis. Sierra Baxter finished number one for Patrick Henry in the event, but you can see why she got such great scores. I mean, I don't try this at home. I know I can't. Uh, one of her cohorts is Taylor Sloan White. And Sloan White, just a fraction of a few points behind Kindred Jones, as she would finish fourth on the floor for Deep Run. Wildcats also getting it done on the beam. Now, this is Callista Ringas. And uh, she would not make it into the top six, but. She performed awfully well on the beam. Number one goes to Sierra Baxter of Patrick Henry. And for deep run, the best. Number two, sorry I didn't get you, Kindred, but she is one heck of an all-around gymnast on the beam. As you see, Ringas with the uh, dismount there. It would be Kindred Jones, second place on the beam again. Kindred Jones also did awesome on bars. She would finish third place overall even though this is Camden Harrison. A nice job by Camden right there. How about Mills Godwin? Two really good stars for the Godwin Lady Eagles. This is one of them right here on the vault. Logan Gutzmer with a fifth place finish. So she gets in the top six. And Erica Ryder, the senior. She made it in states on the vault. You'll see why in a few minutes. 
well, less than a few minutes, to be honest. But on the bars, she's awfully good. Fourth place overall for Erica Ryder, helping the Godwin Lady Eagles to a third place finish at 126.95. Here she is, folks, on the vault. Check the landing out. Nothing wrong with that one. Ryder and Godwin get it. Lee Davis wins a meet. Back to basketball when we return. Freeman and Tucker look for early success against some pretty tough customers. That's next. Takeout meals for just $12.99. Call now. Sherry Pearson. You are the sole surviving heir of the King of Montanopolis, and you are now worth $45 million. I'm rich. This can't be real. Of course it's not real. Come on. Having money isn't about luck. Like that takeout meal. Cook at home instead, you can save thousands a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Welcome back to Sports Wire to Collegiate High School we go, where the Lady Cougars are taking on the Lady Rebels. Rebels on the road. That shot is up and in. Kerrigan White gets it to go. Uh, collegiate, though. They were off and running, often in this one. Already up 12 to 2 over Freeman. Make it 14. Number 33 with the action right there. And then on the run again. Stop, pop, connect. What a pretty roof Collegiate has. That three ball is good. And the Cougars are out and running. Rebels have an answer, however. And it's inside. It's number 12. Eleanor Carey. 17 to 5, though. After one quarter of play. Second quarter. More Cougs. Check it out, corner ball! In the side pocket, the three ball is good. More from Collegiate, this time working inside. Don't even need to use the glass, that is up and in. Too much Collegiate on this night, they look pretty good. Freeman, finding answers, dialing long distance. Monique Fountain of Youth is good from long range. Rebels not done yet. Number 12 with the bucket. It's Eleanor Carey again. Uh, doubled up at the half, 31-15. Second half, we're gonna switch sides now. And uh, good teams practice inbounds, plays, and more importantly, they convert them, they execute them. And that's exactly what number 24 did for Collegiate right there. And then she also goes off the dribble well, finds the open girl underneath. Easy squeezy lemon peasy, Cougs in command. More Kooks. Uh, Freeman going to take advantage of a turnover. All the way to the rack. Yeah, count it for two. Kerrigan White with the answer. And then back to Carey. Rebels had their moments in this one. They just fell behind early and couldn't ever quite catch back up and seize the momentum. It was all with Collegiate. 57 32 is your fight. Well, we stay with ladies' hoops. We go to J.R. Tucker. Last year's. Undefeated regular season. Tucker, Lady Tigers taking on Matoakon. Yeah, they were quick to the rim. This Tucker in transition. They were very fast. But uh, Lady Tigers graduated quite a bit from that team last year. So there's going to be some young superstars coming up. That's one of them right there. Hitting the three. And then Tigers on the run again. Matoaka, pretty good team last year. They're good again this year. Down inside, number 15 was a thorn in the Tigers' side. She was scoring in bunches. Also hitting from beyond the arc as well. Count that as a long two. Matoica was in control early and often. Brianna Payne is back for Tucker. She scores down low. She's going to have to be a big contributor this year. Last year, she started coming on in off the bench and really helped Tucker with their playoff run. This year, she's going to be a serious leader. Number 40 for Matoica with the answer from long range. And more from Matoica. Lady Warriors say, let's go. I told you to hear more from 15. 18 11. Yeah, and that was only just one quarter of play. I think we showed you almost every basket from the first quarter. I'm not even kidding. Number 10 from long range. Count it. Good to see Tucker's got some, uh, got some distance their shooting game. It's going to help open things up inside for Brianna Payne and company. But uh, Matoica just a little bit too much on this night. Still second quarter though. Tucker slashing and dashing to the hoop. That is up and in. Tigers trying to get it 
down from a double-digit deficit. Here come the Tigers again in transition. It's a nice little adjustment in mid-flight on that shot to keep that from being blocked. 43-23 at the half. Let's just say second half. Kind of more of the same for Mighty Matoica. Look out for them down the stretch. They are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Payne tries to come back inside, outside. Tigers didn't didn't quit. No quit. No in uh, this team. Plenty of fight. As you're going to see a steal and eventual score right here. The long range J. Yeah, nothing but nylon. But it's just way too much Matoka on this evening. Tigers go down to the Lady Warriors final 72 38. Matoka gets the W. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us. And you can always follow us on Twitter. I can't wait to see you next time on Sportswire.